Hey everybody, today we are going to talk about angles and their measure. Have you ever wondered why there's 360 degrees in a circle? Well, it all goes back to ancient times when astronomers and people that watched the sky noticed that the stars would reappear in their same positions after about 360 days. And so they thought that, well, the stars were the ones that were shifting around the Earth and that uh, that they would move in increments of about one three hundred and sixtieth of a circle um, each day. Um, in fact, some of the ancient calendars use, like the Persian calendar, use three hundred and sixty to represent the, the number of days in a year. Although now we know it's not uh, three hundred and sixty days in a year, um, that's actually a pretty close approximation in ancient times. Another really cool thing about 360 is that it's a really divisible number. There's a lot of numbers that go evenly into 360. So it's really break upable. So have you ever heard of something called a radian? Well, radians are pretty awesome, and some people, mostly scientists, think they're even better than degrees. And hopefully by the end of this course, you're gonna think so too. Essentially, all a radian is, is a measurement of an angle who, um, who is created when you take the radius of the circle and you like wrap it around the edge of the circle that you're on so that this length right here is also the same length as your radius. And so the angle that's created when you have a radius length and also an arc length that has the same measurement is this angle measurement we call a single radian. It's actually pretty cool. So this is our first in um, several days of notes that you're going to be taking on angles um, in this unit. So we've got a little bit of a goal today. We're going to talk about angles. We're going to use the degree measure. We're going to draw angles in standard position. We're going to talk about what that is. We're going to find coterminal angles, complements and supplements, and we're going to use radian measure and try and convert between um, degrees and radians. It's a lot. So I'm going to front load you with some vocabulary. Hopefully a lot of this is review. So um, we'll start with a ray. A ray is a part of a line that has one endpoint and it extends forever in one direction. So here I've got a ray um, that starts at B and it's going through point A and continues on forever. Now an angle is formed by two rays and they have a common endpoint. That endpoint is called the vertex. So here we see we've got this angle, it looks like it's theta, it might be a little cut off here. Um, and it's created from the ray BA and the ray BC. Their shared point is the point B and that is the vertex. The initial side of, uh, of an angle is where the angle starts and the terminal side is where it, where it ends. So as we can kind of see from here, the arrow is showing, showing us almost like a direction here. This is telling me that my initial side is ray BA and my terminal side is ray BC because it looks like the angle is started at BA and it's going all the way through to here, which is ray BC. Next, we got the definition for degree. Um, a degree is represented by the symbol, this little degree symbol here. You guys are probably pretty familiar with it. And it's a unit of angular measure that's equal to 1 180th of a straight angle. A straight angle is just a straight line. Now, a radian, we already talked about it a little bit. It's the measure of the angle that's created when the radius of the circle and its arc length are also of equal measurement. Now usually we see radian represented by a lack of a symbol and sometimes very rarely we'll see it in the um, superscript position which is kind of like where we see our exponents um, with a capital C. I'm sure you can tell why we don't use that very often right because it would look almost like it's a degree symbol um, if we're not really careful. What you're familiar mostly with your graphing so far um, is probably the rectangular coordinate system where we um, graph on the Cartesian plane. <clears throat> so we're going to talk about how we would graph an angle now. 
An angle is in standard position if its vertex is at the origin of the rectangular coordinate system. You probably noticed that as being the point zero, zero. And its initial side is gonna lie along the positive x-axis. So up and down is our y-axis, left and right is our x-axis. On the left is where we have our negative numbers, and on the right is where we have our positive numbers. So the initial side is this side right here. And if we have positive angles, well, they're going to rotate in the counterclockwise position. So we're gonna move uh, in a counterclockwise direction, and wherever our, um, our terminal side is, that's where we'll stop. And that's gonna create a positive angle. Now, we can also have negative angles and it will still start on the initial side. So having a ray that starts at the origin and goes along the positive x-axis. But instead of rotating in a counterclockwise position, it's gonna rotate in a clockwise position. And that's how you end up with a negative angle. You're just going around in the opposite direction. Not too hard. <clears throat> so how do we figure out uh, a degree or a radian anyways? Uh, so degrees, as I said, are defined as 1 360th of the full rotation of a circle. So um, every degree is one, one step away out of 360 steps um, to getting all the way around the whole entire circle. Um, we can convert degrees into radians simply by multiplying it by pi divided by 180. Now, Insofar as radians, we already know there's 360 degrees in a circle. For radians, there's actually two pi radians in a circle. So um, if we go around all the way 360 degrees, that's the same as going around two pi. So we know that 360 degrees is equal to two pi. I'll put that right up here. But how much is one pi equal to? Well, we can calculate that just by dividing both sides by two. So now I know that one pi is equal to 360 degrees divided by two. That is 180 degrees. So if I wanna use a conversion, that's what this is gonna let me do. If I multiply degrees by pi over 180, my degrees will cancel out and it's gonna leave me with radians. If I multiply my radians by 180 degrees divided by pi, then I'm gonna be left with degrees and so I will have made my conversion as well. So here's our first example. We'll go through this pretty quick. Make sure you let your teacher know if you have any questions. The first thing I want to do is change 60 degrees into radians. So um, if I want to change 60 degrees into radians, I'm going to take 60 degrees and I know that they're in one pi radians, there's 180 degrees. So I'm going to multiply 60 degrees by pi over 180. When we multiply, my degrees cancel out, therefore I no longer have degrees, and uh, 60 goes into 180 three times, so I'm left with um, pi divided by three. So 60 degrees is the same as pi over three radians. Now, I'm also asked to sketch the angle in um, standard position. Uh, hopefully you recall that standard position is uh, when we graph it where we've got to start at the origin and have our ray go off in the positive uh, x direction. You know what, let me use an arrow here. That'll probably be better. There we go. Good gravy. And now I'm gonna go 60 degrees. This is gonna be somewhere in um, quadrant one. 60 degrees is not halfway through, that would be 45 degrees. Nine degrees goes straight up. So we're gonna be somewhere around here. Now if you wanna get really good, 
you could get out a protractor, but we're just doing a little sketch here just to mostly, it's mostly important for us to know um, if we're in quadrant one, two, three, or four. And where are we at? Well, we're at 60 degrees or pi over three radians, and that's gonna be less than 90 degrees. So if this is the 90 degree position, then we're, we haven't gotten there yet. So we are in quadrant one. So um, I could say for question C, we're in quadrant one. And they use Roman numerals uh, to represent the quadrants. Moving along. Uh, next, we're gonna take some angle that's written in radians and we're gonna convert it into degrees. Now, how do I know we're in radians? Well, pretty simply, it doesn't have a degree symbol. If we don't see the de degree symbol, then we're probably in radians. So just like I did previously, um, if I wanna change pi over six into degrees, I'm gonna take pi over six and I'm going to multiply it by 180 degrees divided by pi. And what we'll notice right away, most likely, is that our pi's are gonna cancel out. And six goes into 180 30 times. So that is gonna be 30, and don't forget we have our degree symbol here, 30 degrees. So pi over six is the same as 30 degrees. So they're gonna be in the same position when we draw them. So let's go ahead and sketch the angle. Um, this time, of course, I'm gonna start in standard position. When I go to 30 degrees, now remember, halfway through the quadrant's 45 degrees, I don't wanna grow it. That was where we were at with 60 degrees. I wanna shrink it down. We gotta be less than 45 degrees. So I'm looking at right here. And of course you can bust out the protractor if you want to, um, that, that's entirely up to you. Now, uh, question number C or question letter C, I don't know how you say that, asks us to identify in which quadrant the angle lies. So this is still in quadrant one. So to answer question C, we're gonna be in quadrant one still. I guess we could put the B here so we can see that we're answering question B. Let us continue. So coterminal angles, these happen when um, two angles have the same initial and terminal sides. So how in the world could that happen? Well, it's simple. Coterminal angles happen when they differ by a multiple of 360 degrees or two pi's, depending if you're in degrees or radians. Um, so every time you add 360 degrees, you're gonna end up at a coterminal angle. Every time that you subtract 360 degrees, you're gonna end up with a coterminal angle. If you add two pi, if, if you're in radians, if you add two pi, you'll be coterminal, and if you subtract two pi, you'll be coterminal. So, for example, if I have 240 degrees, that angle is coterminal with negative 120 degrees. That's because 240 degrees minus 360 degrees is equal to negative 120. They both are gonna end up in the same position. Similarly, 240 degrees plus 360 degrees is equal to 600 degrees. And that is also going to end up in the same position that 240, negative 120 degrees end up in. Now here we are with example number three. Um, I'm just gonna do, I think, the radian one uh, because we did just do a degree one on the last page. So um, I wanna find a positive angle that's less than two pi, since we're in radians, that's coterminal with 13 pi over three. Since I'm in radians, what I'm gonna have to do is um, either add or subtract two pi. But I wanna be careful because this is asking me to find a positive angle that's less than two pi. Now, three pi over three, well, let's, let's, that's got a denominator of three. So if I wanna see what two pi is that has a denominator of three, right now it has a denominator of one, I'm gonna to have to multiply the top and bottom by three. So in comparison, 
I'm looking for a positive angle that's less than 2 pi, which is also 6 pi over 3. So I want to get something less than 6 pi over 3. Am I going to add or am I going to subtract 6 pi over 3 to 13 pi over 3? Again, 6 pi over 3 is just a, like a common denominator form of 2 pi. So hopefully you said subtract because we got to get smaller if we need it to be less than 2 pi. So we're going to subtract 6 pi over 3. Well, that's going to give me 7 pi over 3 because 13 pi minus 6 pi is 7 pi. You don't subtract your denominators, of course. And 7 pi over 3, this is actually not smaller than 6 pi over 3, uh, not even a little bit. So we're going to have to subtract again. So I'm going to take 7 pi over 3. I'm going to subtract 6 pi over 3, a.k.a. 2 pi, and I get 1 pi over 3. This is a coterminal angle. It has, uh, and it meets the requirements that we were set in this problem. It is positive and it's less than 2 pi. Now, 7 pi over 3 is positive, it's just not less than 2 pi. However, it is coterminal. And now, this is our final bit of information complements and supplements. Two positive angles are complements if their sum is 90 degrees. That is the same as pi over 2 radians. So two positive angles are complements if you add them up together and you get 90 degrees, or you add them up together and you get pi over 2 radians. Angles will be supplements, that we call supplementary angles, if when you add them up, you get 180 degrees, or pi radians. So let's go to our next question. If it's possible, find the complement and the supplement of each angle. Well, from that prior slide, we know that some angle plus 25 to be complementary is going to have to end up equaling 90 degrees, right? Well, this is just an equation, y'all. If we want to know what x is equal to, let's get it alone. Right now, it's being added with 25 degrees, so let's go ahead and subtract. Whatever you do to one side, you've got to do to the other. So I'm left with x degrees is equal to, well, what's 90 minus 25? So we get 65 degrees. So the complement is 65 degrees. It's the angle that we can add to 25 that will create a 90 degree angle. So how about the supplementary angle? Well, you're going to use similar process, um, but instead we're going to find the angle that we can add to 25 that's going to give us one, 180 degrees. Again, we're going to use the opposite operation. We're going to subtract 25 from both sides. And we get that 180 minus 25 is 155 degrees. So we get that our supplementary angle, the angle that we can add to 25 that will give us 180 degrees is 150 degrees. So that's our supplementary angle. And that's what we've got for you today, guys. We're going to do a lot more of working with angles and their measure uh, in the upcoming lessons. Please make sure to ask your teacher if you have any questions. Bye for now.